What's up you guys? Welcome to today's video. So, as you can tell by the title, we're gonna go to prison today because why not? I'm going to talk to you guys about how to prepare for prison, what you need to take, what you need to think about before you go, what you should wear if you're turning yourself in. I'm gonna break all of that down for you guys today. The female edition. If you're new here, hi, my name is Jess. I'm a recovering addict who served time in prison. I will leave my whole life story it's a crazy one, in the description box down below. If you wanna follow me on any other social media platforms, TikTok, Patreon, Instagram, all of that is linked down below. And I even have a second channel, it is a vlog channel. It's right here. So that's where you can find me chilling, besides here. So, you know, no pressure, but you should follow me there. All right, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. I wrote stuff down so that I could stay organized and the color is orange. Hmm. Did I plan that? Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Now hopefully none of you find yourself in this situation. You shouldn't, but if you do or you know somebody that is waiting to go to prison, these are some things that I would just recommend. Also, if you could just like subscribe to my channel, I mean, you know, it would be really awesome. That way you can hang out with me three times a week. So you just click the little thing and then you can click notifications, but <laughs> YouTube is just crazy, so there's a 50-50 chance that you'll get notified when I upload, so, you know, who doesn't like those odds? Okay, the first thing that I think about when I'm like, oh my gosh, like if this was me and I'm turning myself in to go to county jail and then eventually go to prison, or I'm, I've been out on bond and I got sentencing and like I'm going, I have to turn myself into the county jail and they're gonna take me to prison. The first thing on my mind of what I know, like number one that I need, is money. If you've been arrested and you're out on bond and you're waiting for a sentence or what have you, do everything you can to go into jail with some money. I mean, anything is better than nothing, right? Even if it's $25, that $25 is going to get you hygiene items. And I cannot even stress that enough. Every single county jail I've ever been to has only given me a tube of glue toothpaste, but it's like clear and it's, oh, I used it for glue, but you know, in a pinch, before I could get to commissary or before I could hustle up a tube of toothpaste, I would have to use that. But they give you a tiny little thing of toothpaste and then a tiny, tiny little bar of soap and a toothbrush, a towel, a washcloth, and a uniform. That's it. So you're going to want shampoo. We have to wash our hair, right? You're gonna want conditioner. You're going to want a comb to be able to comb your hair. Now, unfortunately, in all the facilities I've ever been to, they don't sell hair brushes because jails and prisons weren't really designed for women and things haven't changed ever, even though it's 2020. I mean, maybe things have changed, but in my experience, when I was getting locked up, I couldn't buy a brush on commissary that was in New York, that was in Arkansas, and that was in Texas. I mean, I wasn't really in Texas that long, but I had never seen anybody with a brush they bought from commissary. I have stolen hair brushes before from the nurse station so that I could brush my hair. So, and then I got caught with it and got, put in seg. Anyway, regardless, you're gonna wanna go into jail with money so that you can get hygiene items. That's like top, top, top of the list. It is very important. And you're also gonna wanna buy stamps and envelopes, which leads me to number two. Memorize addresses and phone numbers for the most important people that you are gonna wanna call. Your parents, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, whatever. But if you're turning yourself in, just write it on your arm because I don't know if anyone else is this way, but my memory is trash. Unless it's like my childhood home, like my parents' address I know. But if it's like different phone numbers and addresses, I would just write it down if I had time. There has not been one time where I'm turning myself in. I always went on the run because I just didn't have the courage to turn myself in. I always ran. So my, my mentality back then was like, heh, find me. <laughs> so yeah, don't do that. It just makes it harder for you and it makes the judge you know, pissed, so I would not recommend that. I would recommend turning yourself in when you're supposed to. But memorizing your phone numbers and addresses is important, and if you do have the time, and it's not a traffic stop, write it down on your hand. Number three, if you're turning yourself in, and like I said, you've had time to prepare, wear a white t-shirt, plain white t-shirt, no design on it whatsoever, just get one like from Hanes, a plain white sports bra, no underwire, plain white underwear, plain socks. Now, why would you wear all of that? So a lot of facilities don't give you 
a t-shirt. They just give you like a jumpsuit. Some facilities give you a t-shirt, but I would just wear one, but I'll get there in a second. So but wearing all that stuff underneath is really important just in case the facility does not provide those items. In New York, that was not a problem. We were provided with underwear and socks and sports bras and a t-shirt, I believe, and long johns in New York. In Arkansas, I was given nothing. I was given sandal shoes for shoes, like these rubber, they're super weird and ugly and kind of like orange or tan colored depending on where you're at, but they were like, they were like rubber shoes and then pants and a shirt. I was not given underwear. I was not given a bra in Sebastian County Jail in Arkansas. So immediately I was aggressive. <laughs> Cause I'm like, uh, hold up. This isn't gonna work. This isn't enough. You know, and they're over here like, make it enough. <laughs> so one of the many reasons to not break the law or try your absolute best not to find yourself in that situation. So I'm sorry if the lighting sucks. The sun just went behind a cloud and my lights are just temperamental. So I'm sorry. Oh, but there's no guarantee that the jail will let you keep your under items just because they are plain white, but it's worth a shot. There's always a couple of things that you need immediately, like hygiene, like I said, but another item that you don't really think about when you're turning yourself in that you're going to need as a female is a hair tie. I mean, guys have, you know, man buns and stuff, but you're going to want a hair tie for whatever reason. I have always been arrested at my worst moments. You know what I mean? Like haven't washed my hair in three days. I haven't shaved my legs. I get arrested in like the worst states, you know, like state of my, I'm not, you know, I'm in pajamas and my hair is greasy and I just desperately want a hair tie. And when you're first put in county jail, you're put in the drunk tank and it stinks and it's cement and it's not comfortable. And like, all I wanted to do every single time was throw my hair up because it was you know, filthy, kind of like it is now. And that was awful for me. So hair tie was like top of the list. So every single time I went back to the pod after going through intake, I was like, who's got a hair tie? Please just let me get a hair tie because my hair was just driving me crazy. And you feel dirty in jail. Like there's just something about the air and, and the smell. You just feel dirty in jail. That's why maybe you'll hear certain people that have been to prison and stuff, like gotta wash the prison off of me, gotta wash the jail off of me because you just feel like, bleh. You feel dirty. You don't feel like you're getting really clean in there. I can't even explain it. I don't know. So yeah. Hair tie. Try to bring in a hair tie. There, again, there's no guarantee that that correctional officer is going to let you keep that hair tie because you can buy them on commissary and anything you can buy on commissary, they will not let you take in. But you know, it's worth a shot. Okay, the next thing that I would recommend is to ask your family to send you books. Now, county jail time before you're waiting to get sent to prison is just dull, is dead time. I was never a trustee because my charges were always more serious, so I could never even mop the hallway. Mopping the hallway apparently is a privilege in county jails, and if you have felony, is they don't let you go be a trustee or anything like that because you're not trustworthy because you have, you know, felonies. Anyway, not the point. Ask your family to mail you books. Look up the jail's policy on that. Sometimes you can have like used books dropped off, but other facilities want you to mail in the books. They almost always have to be soft cover. You can't mail hardcover books into prisons, but every single jail or prison has very specific rules on what you can send. Now, certain jails and certain prisons allow you to send care packages from an approved vendor or an approved list. Also look into that and see if your family could send you a care package when you get there. Again, every single jail and every single state has different rules. So look up the policies in your jail, see if they have any restrictions on books or care packages or even mail. There are certain jails around this country that will only let you send postcards to a jail. Not even a whole letter. So just be aware of the rules of the jail regarding mail. I wouldn't like read the handbook or anything. <laughs> I would just like ask like, how can my family get me stuff? Can they send me pictures? Can they do this? Can they do that? Most prisons you can send pictures and it's not a big deal. They have started photocopying pictures. So a lot of times, you know, certain facilities that I'm writing, I have friends in prisons all across this country, but a lot of times if I mail a picture, they're photocopying it these days just to kind of cut down on whatever contraband is coming through the mail. So. I mean, I say search the COs, but whatever, photocopy the mail, that's high five. Another thing that I would do if I was preparing to go to prison is I would spend a lot of time outside. 
I would spend a lot of time outside and a lot of time with my family. I feel like for me, it was always like, oh, I'm arrested, boom, put in jail, right? I never had to just wait for sentencing outside where I'm like, I know I'm gonna be taken out of my home. I know that I'm gonna be taken away from my family and it's months of buildup and you're just waiting for sentencing and waiting for a trial. I feel like that is very stressful. So do your absolute best to enjoy your moments on the outside. Again, spend a lot, as much time as you possibly can outside and go outside at night. There are tons of facilities and jails and prisons across this country that will not allow outdoor rec at nighttime. But again, there's some that do. I would just spend as much time as possible outside and get as much fresh air as you can, spend as much time with your family members as you can, and just know that it'll be okay, you're gonna be all right. I think another really important thing to note here is to just be respectful. Prison is all about respect, and as long as you're respectful to those around you, you're gonna be fine. You know, depending on what facility you're going to, you can't always just lay back and do nothing and stay out of the way and not have anyone mess with you. You're gonna have to interact with people, but just do so in a respectful way. There are going to be instances where you're pushed or challenged or pissed off. You have to keep in mind that People in jail are not sleeping very well and they're aggravated or they're tired or they're missing their family and emotions run high and you just have to be prepared for that and you never know what someone else is going through, what their case is like and how they're fighting it and you know maybe someone on the outside had passed away, like you never know. So there are a lot of bad days in jail for a lot of different people for a lot of different reasons. So just be mindful of the fact that you're in you're in a dorm with 50 other people and they have 50 different personalities and 50 different things going on because they're 50 different people, right? So just be aware of you never know what someone else is going through. So respect is top of the list when you're talking about jail and prison. Be mindful, be respectful, be clean because you will get in fights if you don't clean up after yourself, but just know that you're gonna be okay. You know, it's gonna be fine. You're a lot stronger than you know. So if you are preparing for that or you have a loved one preparing for that, Remind them that they're strong and they can do this, but to just be respectful and you should be all right. All right, I'm gonna end today's video here. I'm sure there are things that I didn't mention, so let me know in the comment section down below, what would be your advice if you've been to prison? What advice would you give to someone else that is going through something similar and they're preparing to also go? I wanna hear your thoughts. As always, I love you guys. Stay safe, stay sober, whatever that looks like to you. Please do not break the law, try not to. And I will see you in my next one. So you're gonna wanna want, you're gonna wanna want. <sighs> my number sec, my number second. Oh my God, what is wrong with you? <laughs> but if it's like different phone numbers and different address, address. <laughs>